today I'm going to show you my pantry because I'm a little too lazy to cook a real meal and eat it and record it. So this is what we're going to do instead. It's really nice to have a pantry, you know, too bad it's not like a walk-in pantry, but whatever. Um, I have it, it's pretty disorganized, but it's organized for me. And I have a pretty good memory about like the stuff I have and if I'm out of stock or if I have some left. And this really helps me remember, I have organized in a way in which I remember to go shopping for my groceries. Um, up on the top is mostly like dessert stuff or powders. Like I have like rice powder up here, tapioca starch, glutinous rice flour. They make these sealable now, so that's really nice. But I do have some stuff that's not sealed. Um, I like to rubber band everything if I'm not using it. And then this is from the other day when I made a Nava video. That one's sealed. Um, evaporated milk. Tapioca pearls left over. Let's see what else is up here. I have tempura flour that's up here it's mostly like my Asian flowers and then I also have coarse sea salt I use this to make kimchi I make kimchi maybe uh, three or four times a year and I always use the coarse sea salt Korean coarse sea salt Food coloring for my Nava because it's all dessert up here and I usually have like my chef choice coconut milk up here but since I had Nava this week I'm out <laughs> and here is like kind of where all the chaos is um it's a mix of like Asian stuff and like American kind of pantry items um a lot of stuff is back up too in case like you never want to be hosting someone and then you run out of fish sauce. So, for example, like here's my fish sauce right here. And then I have some canned tuna. I like to toss this in like kimchi sometimes, kimchi soup. I have my green curry paste here. Red curry paste. And punning curry paste. This is what... Red curry paste and punning is what I like to use when I make a bone. And, and then I like to mix green curry with red curry when I just make like a stir fry. Um, you can never have enough spaghetti sauce because I really like making spaghetti when I'm really lazy. <laughs> Ranch, Italian dressing, and by the way, I don't buy a lot of name brand stuff. I really only shop at Aldi and the Asian store. Or I try to shop at Aldi as much as possible and then maybe once a month or something um, we'll go to like a real store, a big store to get like contact solution and those kind of good things. I have this grape jelly spam for Korean stuff. <laughs> this big ass jar of peanut butter because now that we're all working from home, I just eat a lot of peanut butter sandwiches for lunch because Tao works during the day and then I'm too lazy to cook during the day, so peanut butter sandwiches it is. Uh, North Carolina bamboo, gotta always have this. It's delicious. And then sour bamboo, because I'm old. And corn oil, because I, my mom always used corn oil and I didn't understand why, but now that I cook a lot more, I understand that corn oil versus like vegetable oil, vegetable oil has a low heating temperature and corn oil has a high temperature. So your deep frying egg rolls with vegetable oil, it smokes faster. So the temperature won't be as hot and it's already starting to smoke and then that's when you start burning already. But corn oil and like avocado oil can go to higher temperatures and not burn. 
So corn oil is the way to go and that's why it costs more. So here deep frying corn oil. Um, I got two oyster sauces here. Thai sweet chili sauce. Korean barbecue sauce. And a lot of this stuff is not, maybe not stuff that I use super, super often, but I do like to have it in stock now that we have a house because you never know when you're going to have a guest and you need to cook real food for them. And then sesame oil. I keep, I buy, I buy everything in the largest size possible and then I'll just replenish and refill the stuff near my stove. More spaghetti sauce because you can never have enough. Um, soy sauce, again, big. And then just refill the small one. It saves you money. And Frank's Red Hot back here. Let's see. I have, I always have stuff ready and available to make kabong. Again, because you never know when you're going to have guests. Um, banana blossoms in a can. The bamboo shoots in oil for kabong. I got this giant coconut cream in case I have to make a really big batch of coke of couple can't not have the goya poison sauce in case you want to eat spring rolls so down here are like my dried goods i or i mean i got bread and then i have mama ramen noodles these are the pork flavored ramen noodles Wood ear mushrooms, like to use these for egg rolls and uh, for go dumplings. Always gonna have a couple noodles, lots of couple noodles. These are the, I like to eat the fine ones. And then I have Bing Kyo right here, we're gonna sell noodles. Bring the chili, bring the celly. I also cook a lot of Korean food. So. Dried kelp for Korean stocks. Nori sushi wraps. And I do like to put everything in plastic gallon bags for freshness. And I also keep their original, um, the little silicone packets that come in them. I keep them in the bags too. Spring roll wraps. And I'm not really particular about my brand. It's just whatever they have at the store. I know some people can be real meticulous, and I'm very meticulous, but not always. <laughs> Faux noodles here. I usually have a pack of wide noodles up here too. I had Thai last week, so um, my fat wide noodles are downstairs in my overflow pantry. And more faux noodles back here. This is where I keep my white rice. Uh, we eat long grain jasmine with rice. My mom only eats short grain rice, and that's all I grew up eating, but now that I'm older, I eat jasmine rice. This is my purple rice that's sweet and sticky. This smaller pack is my apple brand short grain rice, short grain sticky rice. I will still do short grain sticky rice. <laughs> And then back here, back here I have, it's black rice again, but it's Korean black rice. And I, you know, not all black rice, purple rice is created equal. This is not sticky rice. So you can cook this, you don't have to steam it. You can just cook it in the rice cooker and it cooks fine and it dyes everything purple but it doesn't stick. It's, the texture is a lot more like a brown rice. So that was really disappointing. Um, but Koreans like to eat like mixed rice. So I guess if I'm eating a Korean meal, like Korean soup or something, that would make sense. Right here is my brown rice. And it is also a short grain brown rice. This big one is my soybeans. My soybeans for trialing how to make tofu. Uh, my mom always really made tofu a lot, 
and it's something that I want to become better at, but I need to have a few more bad batches. <laughs> Here is a little bit more overflow of my pantry and dry goods, I guess. Uh, more ramen, more noodles, more instant noodles. Sometimes Tao and I like to go to the Asian store and pick up like random instant noodles that we don't eat just to try them out. It's kind of fun. And then we decide if we like them or not. <laughs> yeah, Mama brand hot and spicy. I kind of feel like it's a take on like Thai people making Korean type ramen noodles instead of the original Mama brand. They're pretty good. It's okay, I guess. I have these instant pad thai noodles which are amazing in a pinch. I love them. But they have thin noodles. And then I also like to add like tamarind to this or uh, tamarind or a protein. And to really doctor these up because I think, I think the tamarind is what really makes pad thai. Um, let's see. We don't have any and spicy noodles right now I think we're kind of over them like we ate a lot of them for a while but we stopped and then we have these dandan Dan noodles but I personally I don't love them because they have this licorice taste to them and I hate the taste of licorice so that's why I just don't touch them sometimes Tao will eat them not too much though and then this other basket right here is like my dry goods so usually if I have um, like potatoes or onions like here are my white onions I've got red onion Oop. I have ginger tomatoes garlic and as Uncle Roger says galangal <laughs> I just realized that I have more in my pantry that I didn't go over. <laughs> cornstarch. I uh, always want to use cornstarch to thicken my sauces or sometimes if I make like fried chicken wings then I like to coat it with cornstarch or rice flour or uh, really cornstarch and rice flour that's what I really use. Rigatoni. Pasta is like my most guilty pleasure. I love pasta. Spaghetti. Love pasta. And I have this fancy little thing. And it's in this container because it is heavily scented. <laughs> um, this is like the goods. Where all the magic happens. I have... My just in case of emergency, somebody drops in. Faux packets, faux spices. I have three of these. You can never have enough of these because you're eventually going to use them. Uh, cinnamon sticks. Same reason for faux. Towel stash of MSG that he thinks I don't know he has. <laughs> I don't use MSG in my cooking, but towel is always sneaking MSG into the cooking. Little red seasoning packets. I got this because I wanted to try to make bun bo hue, but I I sucked at it. It wasn't good. <laughs> Soup. Faux broth. Base. I don't really use it. I think I got that from my mom. Uh, wonton soup base. I forgot we even had this. I should have this out. Tao likes to put this in his egg drop soup. I usually just use uh, chicken broth, the bouillon stuff, but the Tao likes the wonton. And then la seasoning powder. Always, always nice to have, especially in the summertime where my herbs are super fresh. And then five spice, Tao likes to put this on meat sometimes in small quantities because a little goes a long way. And star anise. Um, I have this in a Ziploc bag because star anise is very overpowering, a little goes a long way, and it has like that licorice thing that I don't love, so 
I just like very subtle hints of star anise. And if I put it in my pho, um, I only let it brew for a little bit because too much star anise is not good in my personal opinion. And so, I guess that's it. That's my pantry. And we just had those little personal pan pizzas for dinner. I don't cook every day. I think maybe during this month of December, I might do a, a tools one, like the tools that I have that I really like using in my kitchen. And maybe go through my refrigerator and my freezer. I guess that's it. Thank you for watching.